Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the R. Uh, what else is the R show? That's a bad <laughs> uh, of Sunday Night Live with me and Rebecca. Hey. Hi. Tonight's topic topics is is eBay dying. So before I, we get into that, Rebecca, how has your week been since last Sunday? Really cool. Uh, topics I is. Is eBay dying? Not so, for me. Yeah. Before I, we get into that, uh, yeah. Rebecca, how was your week been since last Sunday? No, it's gotta be week. Gotta have mine locked off. Uh, is on. eBay dying? That is me. Hold up. My bad. Okay. Um, <laughs> how was my week on Sunday? Um, it was cool. Since last Sunday, I went on a little miniature trip to Biloxi and went to some of the casinos and really um, like. You know, I'm the kind of person normally where I, I like spend $500 or I lose $500. Like I want to go all around at the casino, but um, I have a lot of business expenses coming up. And so I'm a good girl. And so when I got to the bottom of my $100 and I had like $4 left, I was like, I'm only going to play this $4. And uh, I turned it into like $350 at the roulette table. So that was awesome. And I saw Weird Al Yankovic at uh, this concert and it was like, one of the most, I mean, I wasn't like a fan of his, but it was like one of the most amazing concerts I've ever seen. So I'm a fan now. Um, it was a really fun time. And it was nice to be able to make money from my pool chair. So I love our business. How was your week? It was all good. Uh, I got a couple more listings up. I'm actually up to 153 listings now in my store. Nice. So, granted, they're not all fast movers yet, but at least I got stuff up. So, so um, and that kind of goes into the, what is eBay dying? I don't think it's dying because I'm not putting up the right stuff myself. Whereas other people might think it's dying because they they're putting up the right stuff at the right time, and the, the buyers are just not there right now because they're on vacation. They're spending money on their family instead of planning for Christmas presents or birthday presents and stuff like that. And I wanted to read off a couple of comments from Cherry Vintage, who left these almost an hour before the show started. So I don't know if they're still up top where I can see them. But she says, no, it's not. Why do some sellers refuse to take responsibility for their slacking? If you want to know the truth, check the stock market and check financial business websites, such as Barron's. The least factual sources of information are economites, eBay message boards, and Facebook. If you have a bad re year reselling, it's not eBay or any platform. It's you. What's your take on that, Rebecca? I mean, I kind of agree with that. Even before, you know, you had posted me Cherry Vintage comments, um, I kind of had told you what I thought about the whole thing and if my week was slow, and I kind of agree. I mean, you know, we were having, um, you know, on Chad's show a couple weeks ago, we had the comment like, are you lucky or are you good? You know, and, you know, we were saying that you can't rely on luck. I mean, I do kind of still like luck, but the idea of luck. But you can't rely on luck. You have to list, you know, as much as you can. You have to buy as much as you can. You have to get out there as much as you can. You have to work really hard. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure what the people who are not having sales on eBay are doing, but I could tell you that for me, I've had like a 60% increase in the last three weeks, which is crazy. I mean, I keep telling people like, this is insane. I mean, to the point where I hired six people, you know, to list for eBay for me because that's how successful I've been with it. So for me, no, I'm showing huge, huge growth with eBay. And, um, and I, I sold like 300 and something dollars in an hour while I was at the Weird Al concert. Just cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. My boyfriend looked at me and he was like, what is that noise? Because, you know, we were listening to the music, but from my purse, she just kept hearing cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. You know, so um, for me, no, I've, I've had a huge increase. Uh, a couple of other comments that are in there. Uh, Swamp Picker Glenn says, is eBay dying? I don't think so. It offers too much for the everyday buyer out there. You can buy 99% of anything that is new or used that exists. And Black Eyed Joe from Australia, so he has a different take, a uh, different eBay altogether, says it's only dying for the seller who 
find excuses not to list. Items will not sell sitting on the floor or back of cupboard. Which is definitely true. I have lots of stuff I have to get listed that ain't gonna sell with the sitting in my house. And then Joe Nico says, with all due respect to tonight's subject, Chris, eBay is only dying in the minds of those who do not have the work ethic nor put the proper effort toward creating a positive income. So. Yeah, I agree with that. And like for me, I've been selling a lot more higher dollar items recently. And, you know, I've gotten equal hits. I've gotten as many CDs as I've gotten high dollar items. But I think that's made a lot of difference because I've chosen to do a lot more consignment and a lot more quality items versus quantity. And so a lot of like $500 of my sales were big ticket items. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do, and we've had this conversation before in the reseller society, is that you know, there's famous studies that have been done that shows that Americans especially perceive uh, value with cost. You know, something and cheap. There must be something wrong with it if it's cheap. There must be something really awesome about it if it's expensive. And, you know, one of my girls, for example, that has been selling for me has had not as, she's had success, but not as much success with as everyone else. And I looked at her listings, and all of her listings are like, and said, what are you doing? Like, you could have put this book for $4 and it would have went, or that you could put this for $7 and it would have went. And so I think maybe that has something to do with it as well. Um, you know, I'm, I'm selling stuff that I would want myself and not just like junk, um, you know, or, or stuff that's left over or stuff that I've had lying around for a while or, um, you know, I'm actually seeking out, you know, really high dollar items. So maybe, maybe value has something to do with it. I mean, what do you guys, do you, are you guys selling? really expensive things? Are you selling a mixture or, um, I don't know, I'd be curious about that. Well, I can, I'm sure I can speak for Chad when he's saying he's, he shows mixture, but most of it, everybody knows his thing is fast dying. It's a uh, soil nickel. So he'll, within 24 hours of posting something, he'll lower the price just so he can get it to move. But he won't lower it to the point where he's not making any money. Right. I mean, I'll generally, I'll generally lower, you know, I'll let something go. I mean, buy it now is different, but I'll let something go like a full seven, five or seven day cycle. And then when I relist it, I'll lower it or I'll let some, something go a full 30 day, um, buy it now or make offer. And then I'll lower the price. Um, and then, but I like, it's weird. Like usually about 60% of my items, 50% of my items, I have to lower and relist. Lately, it's like 85% of my items are selling on that first go around. So, um, it's yeah, it's definitely been kind of surprising for me because um, I expected it to be kind of, you know, in past years, I remember that summer was kind of dead and, you know, but, you know, for me, it's like been crazy to the point where I'm expanding like super fast because it's just so, I mean, I have a lot of inventory as well, um, but I had to get people to help me because I was just having so much, so much. Yeah, it also could be the items that you're listing. Like, somebody might not be listening to the right items, like, I just, for the past, whatever, I was listening to patterns. I know that's not necessarily going to go right now, but since I put the good till canceled, more sales come up in October, November, December, for people that are going to either be setting up for Easter or something like that, that needs a costume for Easter, and how the Halloween costumes people might buy in September just to try getting up before, used up for October for the kids. So I'm trying to get ahead of the curve in a way, which, but it hurts my sales now. But I already knew that July at, at the most was going to be slow because it was one of the slowest months anyway. You right. Yeah, it's and and I I shouldn't admit this because this sounds bad on my part, but lately I've been really a lazy bear too because you know generally i'm the person that i do subtitle and i think about my words and i make my description with measurements and with you know as many you know brand information as possible and i fill all those little categories out and i might cross list and i might you know put a really good picture i've been really just taking three or four pictures of an item one word one sentence posting it done and it's like those are the ones that are selling it's crazy. It's, it's just really been crazy to me. Like I've put in way less time and effort and I've been selling way more, but again, it, yeah, it's probably the fact that I've 
been consigning a lot. I've been consigning a lot of really high dollar ish items or really cool. I don't know. It's just been very, it's been very, it's been very weird to me what's been. I just kind of, you know, because sometimes I'll put something on real fast and just get it listed, and then I'll try to go back to it later and edit it or make it look nice. And I've been getting bids on stuff before I had the opportunity to go back and like fix it. So I was just kind of like, screw it. Like, I'm just going to do them all like that, see what happens. And then they all got bids on them. And it was kind of like, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm curious to what other people are selling. And if people who are having problems, what are they selling and how are they listing and what are they selecting? Cause that's all stuff we can learn from, you know? So I, I, if people are having problems, I wish they would post in the comments and say like what their values or what are they listing or what prices, what categories, so we can maybe kind of analyze it and see what see what the deal is. Well, uh, Rick Day says, as long as eBay sellers get their money at the time of purchase, eBay lives via FBA is dying for small sellers. That I can't answer because I'm not an FBA person and I doubt you are. So you can't can you answer that about the FBA first dying for small sellers or are you not doing FBA? I'm not doing FDA at all, are you? No. So we can't, it's hard to compare the two because we don't have anybody on that's doing FBA. I mean, I mean, I'm doing my own version of it. I mean, I, I, for people who have been watching, they know like I have kind of a network of people that I've been paying to kind of list for me, but they're local and I see them and they come pick stuff up for me out of my unit. They put it back in my unit. Um, I kind of like a little, I almost feel like, a drug dealer or something like I'm not doing anything illegal, but it's kind of too easy right now. I don't know. I just, I started making a series of decisions that seems to be working out for me and I'm incredibly lucky. But as of right now, I have like six or seven people listening for me and it's been going pretty well. So, um, I haven't tried, I haven't tried eBay or, or Amazon's versions yet of it. And then I saw you responded to Coco. She says, so you mean nothing will sell if I'm not listing? But I have over 125,000 listed, and I'm not. I'm on a mini big K. What? <laughs> you have stuff listed, though. Uh, that's a lot of people that I think are saying that eBay's dying is either they're, I guess, they're putting up the wrong items, or they're not. They don't have a store, so it's like they're using, only doing the free listings, and then they're like, okay, I gotta wait for another free listing pro promo, and then what are they gonna do for six? Three to month, three four months when they're not getting promos. See, a lot of people don't get the promos all the time. Or like you know, I've actually seen um, a couple of people. Um, you know, because I'm my blisters are working for me. I'm kind of like helping them out, and I have been noticing that you know, I always am. Even if I'm lazy and I'm only doing one line, I'm always very ultra specific about like like this. I don't know if you guys can see would be a Canada dry ginger ale can aluminum, you know, cause that's what it is. Um, but I have like some people that are just like green can and I'm like, well, wait a minute. Like you can't do that. And I, I think that maybe one of the problems is that people who are, who are listing and not having success aren't understanding like how people find the items. Maybe that's part of the reason that they're just doing like vintage bank, you know, like all that descriptional stuff like super matters. And, you want to think like your customer and you want to describe it the way that they would search for the look for it. So, you know, if you're like me and you don't have a lot of time and you're trying to do 25 listings in 10 seconds and you're just typing like five words, if you pick those words well enough and you pick exactly what the collector of the item would, would type to find it, you know, 1975 version of Canada dry ginger ale can, then maybe, you know, so a lot of my people, one of my girls did not have luck in her first week, but when I looked at her listings, it was like, red shirt, <laughs> green pants, you know, go separate, like, yeah, so, I don't know. Okay, uh, we got a couple questions for you, but before I asked out, uh, well, you already answered one, but I'll have you answer on the air. Uh, when you were asking about what RA is, that it, retail arbitrage is not a site, it's like when you go into a regular big box store, you buy something on clearance and then you resell it on eBay or Amazon. That's called retail arbitrage. Oh, okay. Um, I guess I've sort of done that before. I never knew that was the name for it. Thank you. I'm educated. I need to write that down. 
And Radcliffe asked you if you, each one of your listeners had their own account that they use, and you answered them yes. Um, yeah, so each one of my listers has their own account. I'm fortunate that, like, of the six of them, like, four have those eBay accounts where they have, you know, they've had them for years and years and not used them, so they have, like, unlimited listings and unlimited, you know, dollar signs, whereas my Storage Heroes account, I just started um, a couple of years ago because I wanted to have Storage Heroes as the name of my store, and so I can only list, like, 120, 160, or whatever, so... I obviously can't have six people listening on my account because it would never happen. So I'm trying to do like just high dollar items on my account. Um, and then they all list whatever they want. And um, they are using their own accounts for now. Now if they want to use mine, they can. Um, but for right now, they've all been using their own. And that, that works better because then they can tally their own sales and then give me back the percentage that they need to give me back. Okay. Uh Rajkris had another question for you. He said, what do you do when someone comes up, something comes up missing in your warehouse? Will you start using video? And he means because you have five, six, or however many people yeah. in getting stuff and listing for you, how do you know that they're not keeping it for themselves? That's a good, um, good question. I mean, right now, fortunately, the six that are working for me are all really good friends of mine. I own a dance team, and four of the girls are on my dance team. And one of them is the girl's husband, so that's five. And then the sixth person is my best friend's baby sister. So I've known her since she was born. So I'm not really super worried about it right now because they're all, like, super close people to me who I know. I mean, they're so honest. Like, one girl yesterday was, like, apologizing because she sent me 15 cents short of what she was supposed to send me. So I feel like um, right now it's fine. But if you guys are curious about the system, um, we have a 10 by 20 unit that I put all of the stuff that's for sale into the unit. And um, we each have a color tape. Um, so as soon as we list an item, we take, we go to the, the unit and there's a lock on the unit. That's one of those, um, the disc lock with the letter combination. So you can use the letters to make a word and you don't have to have a key. So they'll put the word in, it changes every week or every couple weeks. They'll put the word in, they'll open the lock, they'll open the door, whatever they want to list, they'll take out, take home, list it and then they'll tape mark it with their color and put it back in the unit and then when something sells it's their responsibility to go back and grab the item and then ship it and pack it and all of those kinds of things um, and then when when uh, if somebody goes in the unit and they see something that has someone else's tape on it then they know not to list that item because that item's already been claimed um, and could people steal from me absolutely but I feel like you know, you steal fifty dollars from me now, or a hundred dollars from me now, and you lose the opportunity to make thousands of dollars in the next couple of years. Hypothetically, I mean, I feel like so far it's been kind of a good system, um, but we'll we'll see what happens. And I'm using paper tape, by the way. I'm using washi tape, which is paper tape, um, which is the only kind of tape I want to put on any items because you don't want to leave residue or not be able to peel it off. So we're all using this beautiful. Um, I can post a picture of it, a beautiful washi uh, paper tape. Uh, Coco made a comment, Nah, I have been doing well, just haven't listed but a few items in the past almost two weeks. Got kids and grandkids here, but doing well. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, even sellers go on vacation or something. So to say that eBay's dying because it's July, you're getting slow sales, doesn't mean it's dying. Because if it was dying, they wouldn't be asking, keep telling us, list stuff, list stuff. They'd be, we can get hearing the rumors that are getting sold or whatever. And people say that anyway, just to cause trouble. So. Yeah. What, did you just ask me a question? Or you just said something? I was just saying, yeah. I was just responding to Coco comment type of thing. Like she's literally on vacation for two uh, weeks because she's got grandkids there. So it's the same thing. Sellers go on vacation too. Why can't the buyers? It's that time of year. Right. Exactly. You were breaking up. I yeah. I didn't necessarily check in there. Um, you know what else is kind of a weird? I always make my listings so that they end on the weekend. But lately, I've accidentally listed them to where they end at like midnight on Friday night or 1 a.m. Friday night, my time central. And those have been 
on like three nights in a row, three weeks in a row on a Friday night, I've had bidding wars on items. And I don't know if it's people like or and then sad that they're not out like that time or if they're like kids that are like high and they're just buying whatever. I, I don't know. It's weird. Um, Uh, let's see. Uh, I mean, look, so query uh, Cheryl Ann's comment. Yeah, I was gonna say you were saying you just do one line. So basically, you don't break some of the eBay best policies that they tell us to do. Because you only do one listing, I uh, one line. You don't do the bullet post, uh, the last line bullets type of thing with all the information. You know. You <laughs> So maybe anyway, you shouldn't listen to you. You break some of the rules. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I mean, yeah, I'm a rule breaker. How often do you get to go back and actually fix it before, so you don't get in trouble? Not necessarily in trouble, but so if I doesn't say, well, that wasn't in the description. Here's a ding on your account. Well, here is something that I learned a long time ago that always saves my ass. I do always take, even if they're shitty cell phone pictures, I do always take a picture from every angle of the item. So I'll take side, side, top, you know, bottom. I'll always put a line in the description that says pictured, um, uh, see picture for description. Like, I don't even know, what, what is the exact verbiage of it? Um, item, item you receive is item as pictured. And I put as pictured in capital letters. And that saved me a bunch of times. Because there's been at least four times where eBay has removed negative feedback because the buyer said, I didn't know what was this, I didn't know what was that. And I said, I put in capital letters to look at the pictures because this defect was in the picture clear as day with like an arrow to it, you know, and um, and they've just let it go. So um, I always I always do that. And, I, you know, if there's a defect, I say, hey, there's a defect. But I don't sell. Generally, if something has something wrong with it, I just garage shell it. I won't put it on eBay because it's not worth risking my feedback for that. So I'm going to ask the viewers before we go on to the other topic that you were talking to me about, wanting to talk a little bit about. Are any of you thinking that eBay is dying? And if so, why? Because when I shared this link an hour ago, someone commented on, my, on the post saying, yes, eBay is dying. So I suggested that they come over and give us their opinion. So. If you think eBay's dying, let us know why, and maybe we can either convince you it's not, or you can convince us it is. Let's see. Okay, well, I tell everybody what you're typing for people that watch this later. Since you're, you're responding to some of the comments, and they may not know uh, what you're responding to. <laughs> sorry, I was just agreeing. Um, uh, Black Eyed Joe was saying make your photo part of the description. I was agreeing, um, and then uh, we were talking a little bit. I was talking a little bit more uh, with Garage Slips about kind of this the cameras because you know he was asking like how can you make sure that people aren't stealing from you, um, and I pointed out the fact that the storage units because my stuff's in a storage unit, so the facility has a camera. Um, and I made the facility's day the other day because I did a Yelp review for them, um, and I did a um, Google Plus review for them and got them over their quota for the month, and they were so excited that they don't care anymore. So they'll totally review their footage for me if I ask them. So I'm not really that worried about it. Well, so far, everybody's agreeing that it's not dying, so I guess the naysayers are not coming to watch videos. <laughs> The naysayers are too busy being lazy, apparently. They're, they're just lying on TV watching, lying on the couch watching TV and wondering why they're not selling anything. Why am I not selling anything? Doesn't it list itself? Or they're on Facebook ask, complaining or they're, on, or they're asking for help on items that may not be selling. <laughs> but. Well, yeah. so, while we're waiting to see if there's anybody that's going to disagree with us. Um. We were talking about what you might were thinking of um, doing to make some extra money because of posts you've seen in the Resale Society. 
<laughs> I apologize in advance if you guys are easily offended. I'm not easily offended at all. So if I if I offend you, I am so sorry. Um, but this has been on my mind all week. I took a vacation with my friends, and for an hour of the drive, and for the whole time we were there, this is all I kept asking. And I felt um, I felt kind of like you, Chad, because I watched your Starbucks video the other day, and I like was like mesmerized by like, oh man, you know, what would I do in that situation? This is what happened. I was reading comments in the Reseller Society, and there's a post recently where someone said that they were selling brand new with tags underwear, and the buyer sent a message, private message, and asked if the underwear was worn, and quote, how dirty was it, question mark. And that started this whole like reseller society conversation about, you know, is it ethical? Is it legal? Can you sell dirty underwear on eBay? And we found out that in fact people do. And people make like two hundred dollars of hair on selling worn underwear on eBay to fetish people. And in fact, they also make like forty-five dollars on socks for selling worn, dirty, disgusting, sweaty socks. And I'm like, I have a bunch of those because I spend 50% of my time in storage units with that are not climate controlled. So I have like a ton of this kind of merchandise, you know, and, but I'm, I'm like, I don't want to get kicked off eBay. I don't know how I feel about other people having stuff like that of mine. Does that make me feel weird? I don't know. Is it worth the money? I don't know. Like, then it made me feel like sorry for strippers because strippers are doing all these like sex acts and prostitutes when like they could do this for the same amount of money. I, I, I'm wrapping my brain around. I'm seriously considering um, doing it, but you know, I was just curious like if anyone's heard of anyone doing it, like you could get your eBay account pulled maybe. Um, I hear that you don't if you put it in the right category. Um, but some people like put it in the adult category. Some people put it in like the clothing category and just put like notes saying like it's dirty or they wore it today and they haven't had time to wash it, but they will wash it due to eBay standards. Um, I'm just, I, I, you know, I'm thinking about doing it. Do I have to put a picture of myself? I don't want to put my face on the ad. Can I put some random girl's picture? Is that misle misleading? Is that dishonest? Is that unethical? Like, I'm trying very hard to be 100% like super, super ethical with every single decision that I make. And so I, like, what are you guys' opinions? Is it an ethical thing and would you do it? Dirty underwear. Well, uh, Cherry Vincent says, per eBay's guidelines, you can't sell used underwear, socks, etc., unless it is washed. Washed? Yep, laundered. I mean, people are, they're saying that, like in the ad, the way they're getting around it is they're saying, these are my dirty socks I've worn all day. This is a picture of me wearing them so you can see they have holes. But I will wash them to eBay standards before I ship them, winky face. So like they're saying that they're gonna wash it, but it's kind of clear that they're not. But there's, I mean, they're completed listing. I don't think they've gotten in trouble. They keep doing it. So I thought that they could, you couldn't do it, but apparently people are doing it. And in fact, there's a separate site that's like the eBay for used underwear. So I, it's like fascinating to me. I love this. I love this topic. Terry uh, uh, mentioned responding with, "No, you can't say anything about it being dirty or yourself wearing them being dirty." Hmm. So I get, okay, interesting, because they seem to think that you can do it, but if y'all are sure you can, then I definitely wouldn't do it. <laughs> Garage Flip says that for $500, he'll come poo in my yard. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, Jerry says she sold fetish shoes on eBay under another account. She knows the rules. I want to hear more about those uh, fetish shoes. See, Black Eyed Joe saying you could state worn once. So it seems like there's a little like, do you do it under another account and just let that account get suspended, or do you not do it at all? That's if you do it under another account, you put it to the same PayPal account or the same IP address, it's going to get caught into your other account, and then they both get suckered. That's true. Um, and I was telling you. 
we don't want to tell people that how to get around this, the system. We're uh, can you hear me? I lost you completely for a second. I, I said, well, no, I don't know what you were saying. Right? What I was said was that we don't really want to give people ways of getting around the eBay system. That's true. Um, I just, I kind of was curious because I have been hearing that it is, you can do it. Um, and even like, forget eBay. Like, I mean, there's this other pantydeal.com that's a website just for selling this kind of stuff. So let's say we don't do it on eBay. My issue is more of like, personally, I don't know if I I could I could do it. Like personally, I don't know if I'd feel weird that some dude has my underwear, but I don't know. Maybe for three hundred dollars, I wouldn't. <laughs> well, let's see. Uh, Tanya Rifty Treasures said that she's done it before, and she felt dirty afterwards. Really? Thank you for that, Tanya. I needed that information. That's what I need. I need like information of people who have actually done it and that makes me feel i mean yeah that's good I, I guess you could post in the comments like you know more more information but yeah i guess if if that's all i need if that's how you felt afterwards and maybe i shouldn't do it thank you for that okay well now that well let's change this around a bit because you are basically answered, you're not going to do it. You're gonna, you don't want to get in trouble. We don't want you to get in trouble. But what about those pictures of people that are selling games and stuff with their female parts in, right around it? Have you seen those yet? I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that. Um, That'd be like when you were holding up the, not to sexualize you or anything, but the point being when you were show, showing your soda can. The person would have had the soda can holding sitting right there when they took a picture, and then they would say whatever they wanted for the for the price to try attracting the male, or in some cases the males that do the same thing, so they're trying to attract the female viewership buyer. Is that against eBay standards? I was, I guess it's not. It's just marketing. It's a form of marketing. I mean, I I'm all for it. I mean, I. I was known for going to storage units in eight inch heels and a mini skirt because when I stepped up to that unit and I looked in that unit, nobody was bidding. Nobody was looking in that unit. Everybody's looking at me, you know? So that definitely was a little way to kind of use femininity. I mean, you, you use what you got. You know, if you have a really big, nice truck, you can haul more stuff. If you have a really awesome computer, you can do better graphic design for your ads. Like you can use what you, what you were given and what your assets are. And, I've definitely flaunted, you know, my sexuality like at garage sales and flirted with customers. I think any salesman is going to flirt with people when they make a sale. You know, we've all seen the perfume, you know, really hot perfume person, salesperson or the really hot expensive I mean, clothing store retail person and they flirt with you. They make you feel like you're the only person in the store and that's why you buy the $300 suit. You know, so I, and it's really no different to me. You know, if you're going to flirt with somebody virtually to get them to buy something, um, I don't see a problem with it. Okay, I see a comment that I want to respond to. And Joe Panico says, research before trying to educate. We are trying to educate Rebecca. She asked a certain question. I knew people were, that knew that rules were in the chat, so we're helping everybody learn. We're not just trying to get around the system. You should know me by now, Joe. So, in besides that, uh, Cherry Vincent said, that's right. If you're going to sell fetish items on eBay, follow the rules to a T so you make profit, not fail. Yeah, and, and that's kind of where my question came from, too, is because I've heard, I've, I've been reading about this now for a week, and I've looked up all these other sites, and I've heard, like, so many conflicting, um, you know, yes, you can, no, you can't, yes, you can if you rate, clean will clean afterwards you know no you can't yes you can if you put it in the adult category no you can't if you don't put it in any category so i wanted to kind of get a consensus and i really wanted to see if anybody had done it before so i'm really um happy that tanya kind of clued me in and i still might do the socks though i feel like even though that's still a fetish though i guess that is kind of weird i was telling you before we went on air i had a friend who was a ballerina and owns a dance studio and she was selling her, 
shoes, her uh, toe point shoes, and she was selling them. They were worn, and she was putting, you know, I've danced in these shoes for years. They're very worn, you know, for, for dancers that are new only. You know, this is not like a professional performance shoe. This is like a practice shoe. And they were flying, you know, for like hundreds of dollars. And she thought that people were buying them because of her expertise and because they were so well taped and they were so well sewn and she repaired them herself. And it turns out that this guy asked her how long they were because he was trying to, she had uh, 5.5 feet and he was trying to, trying to put something in her, in the shoe. And she was like mortified because that's, she didn't think that that's why they were selling. So I guess in her case, I mean, maybe I'll start selling things that could be a fetish, but just pretend in my own head that they're going to people who just really love stuffed animals, you know, or really love shoes. And then I feel better about it. And I've technically done nothing wrong and then they can do what they want with it. And everybody's happy. Maybe I'll just do it that way. Just, just pretend like, you know, just list things that could be, but not necessarily that that's what you're doing. It for. And that's what I'll do. Okay, let's see. Uh, Sherry Vincent says, call eBay if you are serious about it. Don't take other sellers on a message for word for it. So, basically she's saying, do your research, call eBay, get their take on it, and go from there. That way you get the direct answer. Yeah, it sounds kind of creepy to me too, but I will, I mean, I hate to call <laughs> I kind of don't want to call eBay because I feel like if I do, they're going to be on my butt for every piece of clothing I sell from now on. You know, if I sell brand new Calvin Klein wood tags, men's boxers or whatever, they're going to be like, remove, you know, like I don't want to do anything where they're going to like, you never want eBay like scrutinizing your account ever for any reason. Um, and PayPal's already scrutinizing my account. We, we got into that a little bit last week. So I don't know if I really want to start trouble for myself. It was more of a curiosity thing. And I saw Skunk said, what's next? Selling used toilet paper, laugh out loud? Well, maybe not selling the, new, the toilet paper, but you can sell the toilet paper rolls for crafts. So, I nice. you, have you of that, Rebecca, since you are the crafty one in the group? Um, I have definitely had people donate them to me for crafts. I've never sold them on eBay for crafts. Um, crafts with an F T S. Um, let's make that clear. Um, because I was confused for a second what you said, were saying. Um, but I don't know. I no, I've never sold them on eBay. I think I've seen them a couple times. Something like that though is so cheap. Like everybody has it. You'd have to sell a thousand of them for like five bucks. I feel like to get people to bid on it. That's my opinion. And I saw you have a question about the antique toothpicks. You remember Sean Kultos, who was on the very first time you were on with me? Yep, sure do. And he has a video about antique toothpicks. Oh, I have to go check that out. Yes, okay. you do. Well, at least he had it up. I don't know if it's still up. He's kind of changing his uh, channel around a bit. So I don't know how much he has still up about reselling. But I'm sure you have Sean on the, your Facebook friends list. Yes, I do. So you can even ask him on the, in that if you want. Yeah, I definitely will. I'm making a note on that right here next to my retail arb. So funny. Uh, let's see. We got uh, 20 minutes, so. Is there any other topics you wanted to talk about, Rebecca? I do have one more question, and this, again, is not like a, I haven't done my research kind of thing, but it's more of a, I was just looking for other people's opinions, because I've had my own opinion for a while, and I'm just, I'm curious what you guys would do, because that's why we're here. We're here to, if we only, like, if I only talked to you guys about what I knew for fact all the time, it would be an interesting show. It'd be like a class. It'd be like me being like, all right, now class, let's discuss what, how we, you know, decorate a house. Da, 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 da. First, we're going to know. Like, I want to discuss it with y'all because, you know, I'm, I learned stuff from you guys too. Like, I don't want to be here talking all the time and like not 
learning something back. Like that's part of a community. So um, I bought this kick-ass, I didn't buy anything. I acquired this really, really, really kick-ass um, estate the other day. And it's full of Louisiana World's Fair. So some of you may know, some of you don't maybe know. They used to have this like huge World's Fair and every couple of years it would go to a different place. And in 1984, it was here in New Orleans. And there's a lot of people in New Orleans that collect the items. Not too many people, but there's like a few diehards that like absolutely want World's Fair stuff. And it's kind of a sad situation because back in the early 80s, you know, people thought World's Fair was going to be going on forever. It's not. And they thought that they were going to have World's Fair every couple of years throughout infinity. They're not. They're just like Beanie Babies and just like Pogs and just like every other craze we've ever seen. People bought hordes of hordes of hordes of stuff because they thought that if they paid 99 cents for it back in 84, they could buy 500 of them. And then in 2084 or 2024 or whatever, they'd be able to sell it for $100 a piece, $500 a piece, $5,000 a piece. But the people that had the event were greedy and they knew this and they made way too many of the items and everybody bought them another worthless, give or take. But Katrina killed a lot of our, our Katrina flooded away a lot of our stuff. So there is a market now for people who want this World's Fair stuff that had it but don't necessarily have it and they will pay for it. Here's the question. So because this lady was a hoarder and she bought these items by the hundreds, when I sell them, this is what I was thinking. Is it better when you have a sort of semi-rare item where you have like a hundred of them? Is it better to put one up at a time and make it look like it's super rare and put one up and let it sell and then put another one up and let it sell and put another one up and let it sell? Or is it better to put all 100 and see if somebody wants to buy a whole lot or see if, you know, and I kind of usually want to put them all up because I'm, I'm interested in wholesalers. You know, if I have a hundred that are five dollars each, if a wholesaler wants to give me like two fifty for all of it, that's fine. But with this, because this stuff is rare and I know I can get five ninety nine a piece, I kind of want to hold them back because I don't want everybody to know that I have, you know, five hundred of them. So I was I was toying with the idea of making like a website, like an online marketplace, like instead of doing eBay, maybe putting like one or two on eBay and then putting the rest of them on like a GoDaddy marketplace where people could fill out their shopping cart and buy as many as they want. So I just was curious on you guys' thoughts on that, if you want to post in the comments, whether you would list them all kind of hold back and make it still seem like a really rare item and post one or two at a time. Because if people go to eBay and they see 500 available, they're going to be like, whatever, you know, I don't need that right now. But I know I'm the only one that has them in the city. Okay, well, I've seen people saying quick flip, sell one, at, there's others saying sell one at a time. My suggestion is why not put up, do a, Depending on what they if they're all look alike, do a listing of ten of ten. Then when as they sell, you get rid of those ten, then you put up use the same listing, put up sell your next ten. So you get it through the hundred. That way, whether someone wants to buy it to all ten at once, they can do ten at once. They want to buy one or two at a time, there you go. So it's like you're letting the person decide what they want to do. They're not risking all hundred at once and still making money. Yeah, I mean that that's Kind of what I was thinking, but that's that's a good um, that's a good good idea. It's it's kind of just a a, a weird thing because you know had I had these items in two thousand and four before Hurricane Katrina, they wouldn't be worth hardly anything, you know, because everyone had them. But because it's kind of a and that's what I mean, like Cherry Vintage said, there's no such thing as a sort of semi rare item. That's kind of what I mean. Like this item would not be rare at all except for the fact that it was only sold in a city that completely lost 85% of its belongings due to flood. So that's kind of a weird situation. So a lot of people lost, lost their, um, lost their, their stuff. Um, and then some people are saying like, it's, it's a lie. I mean, is it, if you put, if you have a hundred items and you put one up, you shouldn't say there's only one available. This is the only one I've ever made in the whole world, but you don't have to say, Oh, I'm putting this book up, but I have 800 books in my warehouse. You don't have to put how many you have. Like you're not lying. Like do you do you normally just like if you list a coin and you have 8,000 coins, do you normally say that? 
I don't, I don't think most people would say that they have a whole bunch of one item. Like you have patterns. When you list your patterns, do you say, hey, this pattern's cool, but I have 400 more where that came from? You know, I don't know. I mean, that's well, kind of why I'm asking, I guess. Well, my patterns aren't all the same. So they're maybe the same companies, but they're never, I, and then when I have the same ones, then I don't, I don't even do the, what I suggested to you, because their conditions are different. So I wait until one sells, and then I'm going to put up the next one. Or in this case, the ones I still got behind me, I'm actually thinking of doing it in a Facebook group as a lot instead of trying to put them all on eBay. Because I'm starting to get tired of listing them on eBay. <laughs> so trying to do a different scenario to get the sale that way. Yeah, and I could change up the um, – Barbara is asking when to get a cup cup of coffee and what item are we talking about? I got the 1984 Louisiana World's Fair items and it's like um, there's a few items like uh, t-shirts like t-shirts I see on eBay that are going for 54 sold a piece. I only have four or five t-shirts but there's items like matchbooks for example or little like the little soap I forget the name Savign Savignon sets with the little sheet of soap that you add with I have like 5,000 of those. And I see them going on eBay for four ninety nine a piece. So I'm kind of super excited about this lot, but I was just curious about whether to sell it all or sell it like a few here and there. Um, you know, I want to move it quickly for the client, but I, I don't want to just give it all to one person. Like I kind of want it to go back into the New Orleans culture as well. Like I kind of want a bunch of different people to have it. So um, just curious what you guys, what you guys are going to do. Oh, well, Jeremy says, Ugh, it's not about how many you have, it has to do with how many are in existence in regards to how rare something might be. So, how, how many did they make of what she brought you and how many were actually destroyed that you know, can know of? Right, well, I mean, just looking at, like, for example, like, Worth Point. So, I'm looking at Worth Point for this this particular little soap thing that I have. I've seen two sell for between three and five dollars over the last 10 years. So over the last 10 years, eBay, auction house, private listing, and every other you know website that, that Worth Point grabs from, there's only been like two sold. So I mean, yeah, I'm kind of excited that I have, you know, a couple hundred, if not haven't counted them yet, but I definitely have a couple hundred of them. Um, you know, and, and I don't know, I, they're not rare. I'm not going to say it's like a 1943 copper penny, you know, it's not like there's only one in the whole world, but you know, I posted it on, on Facebook that I had it and immediately I was getting like 20 people blowing up my phone and like, oh my God, you know, I've been looking for that everywhere or kind of, kind of stuff. So I know it's special. I know it's special. Um, I've sold, you know, like the t-shirts, the t-shirts that are like $51 a piece that are going on eBay, I've seen one once. And I've been selling World's Fair stuff for 20 years. You know, so now I have like seven or eight of them. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, you know, this is this is stuff that, you know, in New World, I've lived in New Orleans my whole life and I've sold stuff in New Orleans my whole life. And I've come across a lot of this stuff and I've sold a lot of this stuff, but I've never seen a collection like this before. That's fact. I had $50,000 estates and I've never seen a collection like this. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about it. So don't, don't kill my joy. I just was kind of curious, um, you know, generally if you guys like to kind of sell all at once in bulk. It's like a fast nickel slow down kind of thing. Um, but I, you know, there's, it doesn't seem like there are any on the market right now that I'm seeing currently on eBay. Um, and there have been a bunch of, not a bunch. There have been similar items, but not quite the same item that have sold for a lot of money recently. So I see that the market's hot right now. They're interested in World's Fair, but they're not necessarily listing the items that I have currently. That are items I've never seen before. So I'm 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 excited about about the collection in general. Okay, uh, we got a question from Tanya for you about it. Is, are there any listings on Amazon for it? No. I mean, there, there are, there, like, here's, here's, here's what made me so excited. Hang on one second. Well, uh, I was just saying, um, 
Terry made the comment that if you bought something at Disneyland in 1984, it's not not rare, but I'm making the comment that the World's Fair was only in Louisiana for that one year. So like Disneyland has been there since the 70s or 60s. So you could go to Disneyland every year from 60 to whatever. Like this fair was only in New Orleans from January of 84 to October of 84, not even a full year, like eight months or something like that. Um, so what did you ask me just now? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Tanya had asked if you were any on Amazon. You had said no. Oh, yeah. The reason I was, I was really excited about this collection is because it's a lot of stuff in really good condition, all still in the bags, never opened. Stuff that, some stuff I have seen before, some stuff I haven't seen before. The stuff I have seen before, I have in high quantity. The stuff I haven't seen before, I have in low quantity, but I still have. So to clarify, um, I've seen a lot of sales for World's Fair on both eBay and Amazon in the last two months. So it's not like people were buying it like three years ago and they're not buying it now. So it seems like people are interested and they're shopping, you know, as recently as like four days ago. But the items that they were buying are not items. I have items that have not been selling. I have items that are not currently listed. Um, so that's why I'm a little bit excited because it's, World's Fair stuff, but it's not items that have been it's new items to eBay right now. They're not currently on eBay or Amazon. Some of them. Uh, and this is a huge, like you guys. I'm saying this is a huge lot. Like this lot filled up. I had to do an entire 10 by 20 storage unit just for this stuff. It is significant. It's not a World's Fair. Um, there's maybe five boxes of World's Fair, but the five boxes I have, I'm like super excited about. And I'll show you. I I'd have to leave the computer to show you right now, but I will bring, um, I'll post some pictures on my Storage Heroes page tonight and tomorrow. I'm processing it right now, and I'll maybe next week I'll, I'll show you guys some of it because I'm super excited about it. Well, what, another suggestion I can have for you that I'm surprised nobody else has said it in the comments is why not try doing it locally since you want it, you were talking about possibly wanting it to go back to the local community since that's where most people would want it unless they moved. Put it on a Facebook local group. That's a good idea too. I might, I have a lot of people asking if they can come see the collection that are local. I have like maybe 12 or 14 world star collectors in my, you know, phone that have always been like, please call me if you ever get anything world star we want. It. So the people that want it, like definitely die hard, want it, want it, want it. Um, so maybe just as a matter of like diversifying it, like putting a little bit on eBay, putting a little bit on Amazon, putting a little bit in a Facebook group, putting a little bit on the phone, putting a little bit on the thing. I like, I was really thinking about putting a website up of just World's Fair stuff that people, if they're, they're World's Fair collectors, to come to that website and do a checkout with a cart on the website because I have functionality. I have a website that, that can do that kind of cart functionality that I don't have to pay any kind of percentage on eBay fees. And then also I might get a new customer base. I might get people that you know have never bought from me before that are attracted to World's Fair and I might get them on my mailing list on my landing page or I might be able to and get sell them other things that I have on my website. So I don't know. I just I'm trying to because it's such a nice collection. I'm trying to get kind of an idea for what you guys would do. Well, uh, we've got Cherry Vintage with the comment, and then Chad did. I'll read Cherry Vintage's first. She said, "It still doesn't matter. I have a Heinz Dill pickle pin from the '30s World's Fair, and it's not rare. As many were produced and still exist." Chad responds with. But there are World's Fair items that were mass produced and are not available, which could make them rare. It is two sided. Right. I mean, I'll plan again. Like, again, like I know I've said this before, but I don't think people are, are understanding like the magnets. Like, when, and maybe people, I know we have a few people here that are from New Orleans. We had 80 mile, there was an 80 mile radius of people that lost every single thing in their home. And there's not a single person within that 80 mile radius that was not affected. Not everybody lost their homes, but everybody lost their car, their house, their job, their workplace, or a friend, guaranteed. You lost one of those five things, without a doubt, no one came out on skate. So, there's, yeah, they were mass produced, but no, they're not readily available, you know? A lot of people lost a lot of things in Hurricane Katrina. It's one of the reasons I don't find antiques here very often because everybody lost all their stuff. 
I mean, our city sat under 18 feet of water in some places for 45 days. So even if you didn't have water, you had mold, you had mildew, you know, you had looters, you had fire, you had no emergency services. So it's not a diatribe or spiel, like, feel sorry for us, but they're not, um, I don't know, I, I kind of agree with, like, there are items that are mass produced and are not um, available. I mean, you know, you, I mean, you have factories that make a million of something and then they have a fire and only one server, you know, like just because it's mass produced doesn't mean rarity is how, to me, rarity is if you can find it right now. If you can find something right now, is it rare or not? If I want to go get a Coca-Cola, I ain't going to have a problem. That ain't rare. You know, if I want to find a Loganberry, I'm going to have to go to Buffalo, New York. So, but to me, it's how easily can I get this item in my area, if that makes sense. But that's, that's cool. No, not Gnolins. Oh, my God. Fox Alive. I thought it was pronounced Gnolins. No. Okay. Well, we got about four more minutes. Maybe yes. that'll be next week's topic of thinking, even though I could do it on a yard show, but I'll save it for next week, Sunday. And we have try finding somebody that can talk to us about it is what's the difference what is rare and what's not what do they consider a rarity and such to get more in depth into that sounds like a plan i like how now for once we don't have to stress out about what the topic is it just like came naturally yep so that's what we'll always start the show with so And maybe we can make our own decision that we all agree on. Maybe we'll never agree. Um, you know, it's all kind of subjective. But part of the reason I like being here is because it's nice to get other people's opinion on stuff. You know, like I, if I'm a coin collector, if I'm a brand new coin collector, I'm not. But if I, if I was a brand new coin collector and I found a 1943 steel penny, and I didn't know the difference between a copper and a steel. And I went on and Googled and I found it was like worth lots and lots of money. And I was like super excited. I might think that forever until one of you was like, no idiot, like <laughs> no dummy. Like you have, you know, they made a million of those. Like it's the other one that you want, you know? Um, so it's, it's nice to kind of get that like reality check. Um, wait, Chad, you can't steal our topic. The crap. Um, Oh, hold on one second there before you could keep going. I just got our, our an offer for our guest on the show for next week. Ooh. Drew, you're on. Yay. That'd be awesome. And just to remind you, Rebecca, you didn't have to go back to watch it or at least parts of it. Drew was on when we were talking. I can't even remember exactly what our topic was then. And we spent had three hours. With I Drew. remember. I remember, I don't remember what the, I don't remember. The topic was yard sales, wasn't it? It was no. yard sales. Not for Drew. Drew just was doing the, he, he goes into dumpster diving and all that other stuff. It, stuff it, that type of stuff, so. I don't Drew, remember. Yeah, that'd be, yes. That's going to be exciting. I'm excited. So I'll be sending you a, we'll have to get together in the PM, uh, Drew, the, Work out the details, so make sure you're home in time. I'm putting it in my calendar right now. Yeah, there's a broad shell swap that it is, so that, that's no problem. I'll be, I'll be close by home all day. And just so you know, uh, I don't know how serious he was. I, I don't take it too seriously. Chad said he's going to take our topic Friday. Yeah, that's why I said, no, you can't take our topic. Come on, you're popular enough, Chad. You're going to get them with your smile and your dimples and your story about Starbucks and stuff. And you're funny. And that's why people watch you. So leave our friggin' topic alone, <laughs> Golden Finger Picker. You heard me. Drew, it's going to be next Sunday, and we start at 7 o'clock Mountain Time. So that's 6 o'clock your time. So, and Cherry, I know I take it seriously too. You should. I've been trying to. That's why I'm saying. That's why I have somebody on that knows what they're talking about. I'm trying to try taking it seriously. And it, if it helps us 
helps Rebecca learn, helps me learn. That's what I want these shows to do. Help us all learn, not just me, not just the viewers. So. Yeah, I mean, if people want to do it, you know, it's it's not easy and not not an easy thing trying to fill up an hour also with with kind of this stuff. And people ask questions, and I'm not ever giving the ultimate answer. I'm giving my answer. So you have to kind of keep that in mind. You know, if you don't like my answer, maybe you don't like me, and maybe that's fine. Maybe you think it's wrong. Maybe you think it's incorrect. But what we do is kind of subjective. And so I'm not coming to you as the expert. I'm just coming here as someone who has done this for a really long time and loves to do it and is moderately successful at it and has had some really kind of cool breaks with it. And I mean, I, I do the best that I can. So if somebody else wants to try to do it a different way, you know, I, that's fine. If somebody disagrees, that's fine too. But I just kind of answer what you guys are asking and give my own opinion. And I try to be pretty specific. You know, I could be vague. I know how to bullshit. I, you know, I used to have a business partner that would flat out, straight out bullshit everyone, and it made me so uncomfortable, but I know how to do it. Like, if you want to bullshit people, you could just be vague. I could have just come up and said, oh, I have a rare item. Y'all wouldn't have had to know what it was. Y'all would just have believed me that I had a rare item. Like, no one would have asked. Like, the fact that I actually, like, broke down what, what I had was kind of, like, because I'm asking for opinions from other people, and so I wanted to give you all the facts. So... Well, so, I guess we're gonna have two, another guest for our show, though. Just so you know, Chad, sure. he's gonna crash it. So if he can, yeah, crash it, that means I'm putting him on. The, I had a guest, and Drew said he will show us some rare items too. So, I mean, and I've, you know, I've, I've had items in my hand that. Okay, here's a perfect example. Um, you want rare? This is rare. Let me see if I can find a picture of it. Carry on for a second without me. I'm going to see if I can find a picture. I might not have one, but I'm going to try. Hang on. It's all you for a second, Chris. Well, let's see. Uh, Cherry Mitchell says, the sound side of caring, calling things rare that are not is one can disappoint buyer get listing pulled. It's professional to know your business and care to rate condition. And Chad said he's got something to say, devil's advocate. So. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all subjective, too. I mean, like, okay, for eBay, for example, we all kind of, you know, realize now that in eBay, you know, like, for example, if it's a CD, you have an item that's new. And if it's new, eBay wants that CD to be in shrink wrap with price tag, not ever opened then you have very good, then you have like new, then you have good, acceptable, pay, poor, you know, fair, poor. You know, if you deal with eBay a lot, that if it's super, super, super scratched, you can't list it as like new. You can't list it as good. You can't list it as acceptable. If it's super, super scratched and it might not play, you have to list it as poor, you know? So we get that because that's their rules that they've put on people. But the rest of the world is subjective. You know, you might say something is rare. You might say something, like to me, you know, for me, I might call something rare, but I might also have ultra rare, mega rare, super rare, you, you don't know, like, but somebody else might just have good, great, rare. So for them, rare is like number one, but for you, maybe it's like number three. So it's kind of all subjective, but I do want to throw this out so you all know that I do know like, I do know what rare is. I mean, I used to work, um, I used, I spent a lot of time in automotive and I used to have like Lamborghinis and Ferraris and, and this and this and that. Um, and one of the cars I got in was an LM01 American, which was a Lamborghini basic car. So the LM001 American was what the Saudi Arabians made for the sand because they couldn't have Lamborghinis where they were because they were too low and they would get stuck in the sand and they couldn't move. They needed something really big to be able to ride the sand dunes. So they got the LM001 and LM002, which was the American one. Okay. Hey, uh, Rebecca. Yeah. I think I, Chad's giving us a good idea. He says to stop now, save it for next week. Good, good call. Good call. We'll do that because I have that. I have a 250 ever made item, and then I actually got to see an item that was one of a kind ever, only one ever made. So, trust me when I say I knew kind of what 
ultra rare. Let's call it ultra rare. But um, definitely for next for next time. Cherry Panties, we're taking it seriously. Watch next week and you'll see how serious we take it. I'm going to end the show now. Uh, do you want to stick around for an after show, Rebecca? Sure. Okay. Because I'm, I'll, I'll post a link in the Reseller Society since I'm already still on Facebook, apparently. I didn't, I didn't sign out like I normally do. So mm -hmm. I will see you guys Wednesday night when I believe Yard Sale Hunter is going to be my guest. I can't guarantee for sure, so we'll see what happens then. So I will see you all Wednesday night, and Rebecca will see you Sunday night, unless she starts doing some of her videos that she's been promising us. Well, I mean, I don't know anymore. I'm kind of scared to say anything, but maybe I'll do a video. You can do a video of anything. You can even show what some of your stuff that you get. But that's we'll talk about that after in the after show. So yes. I will see you all later.